back in the Emerald side of things, you're gonna want to go to either Lily Cove City or Slateport City because they got the boat hanging out for you. Remember we got that ticket like right at the beginning of the after game and we never even acknowledged it or used it or done anything with it? Well now is the time we're gonna do that. We're gonna just go into any port you want to go to and just head to the opposite town. Because when you get onto the boat, you get awkward transition. What? Here for your ferry? Make sure you ticket? Yes. Watch the ticket. Let's go. Oh, I said exit. Yeah, I want to go to exit. No, go to Slateport. And we're off! Ever so conveniently, I was the last one to get on board. And hey, look who it is! Well, hi, hi, Jeffrey, Jeffrey. Something's come up, so I have to disembark. But I am I glad to see you. Congratulations, League Champion. There's a place I'd like to invite someone like you. It's the Battle Frontier. What's that place like? You'll understand when you see it. I've spoken with the ship's captain about this. The next time you take a ferry, you should be able to sail to the Battle Frontier. Okay, Jeffrey, I'll be waiting for you at the Battle Frontier. I wonder if they want us to go to the Battle Frontier. We hope you enjoy your voyage on our ferry. So your bed is over here in cabin number two. All you gotta do is sleep in here and then your uh, sailing ride will be over if you wanna get out of here super quickly. Or if you wanna go ahead and fight some trainers, then you could do so because this place is filled with them. So I think I'm gonna speed up real quick and play some music or maybe I'll have something to talk about. And we'll just meet you guys on the other side. We're going to the other side. have made land in Slateport City! Thank you for sailing with us! Why does it take so stinking long? I don't know. But it's part of the experience. We've arrived! And we made it to a town that we've been before. Alright, a town that we have been before? We've been to before. Captain Sir Jeffrey, we finally finished making the ferry SS title. We couldn't have done it without your friend Mr. Briny. Please go for a short cruise on it. Yes, now Scott said that he gave us permission to go to the Battle Frontier, so basically we just had to go on the boat, get off, and get back on again so we could ride to the Battle Frontier. So now we gotta go right back on and go all the way back around to a land that has never been seen before. 
And thankfully we don't have to go through another boat segment. We are here at the Battle Frontier. The Battle Frontier. I've long dreamed about a place like it. Is This place is only available in Emerald. Is it your first time here? Please step this way. The front lines of the Pokemon Bat- The front lines of Pokemon Battling. Welcome to the Battle Frontier. For a first time visitor, we issue the Frontier Pass. It's for use at all the facilities in the Battle Frontier. Here you are. We hope you enjoy all that the Battle Frontier has to offer. Well, if it isn't Jeffrey, you came out here. Oh, Mr. Scott, sir. Good day to you, sir. It's great to see you here. It really is. I hope you'll take your time and explore everywhere. Naturally, I hope you'll also experience the pure essence of battling. I also have my quarters here, so feel free to visit if you have time. So, the Battle Frontier. What exactly is it? It is, unfortunately, not that great. Now, what I was hoping it would be would be sort of like what they did in Gold and Silver and Crystal, where after you beat the main game, you got the entirety of Kanto opened up to you. Even though it wasn't as long and as grand of an adventure as Red and Blue was, it was still cool to have an entirely new region opened up to us that is available in the after game. We could just like go through all the old places again and have a second adventure, basically. This is sort of attempting to do that, but in a much smaller scale. The Battle Frontier, if we can pull up our map, I think it's on the Poke Nav right now. Uh, wow, okay, just this tiny little island right here in Hoenn. It is not a big old region. All of the facilities in the Battle Frontier are on this one little island. And I do mean little. So, we could just run around and talk about the Battle Frontier, but I'm not actually going to be showing you what the Battle Frontier is all about, because this thing is made to basically never end. It's made for people who just really like battling, really like developing competitive teams, and just want to play Pokemon Emerald forever and ever and ever. It could go on basically forever because the requirements that you need to accomplish or fulfill in order to be done with this stinking place, it could take literally forever. It is really stinking annoying, and I've never really attempted to do it because unless you have a very competitive driven team, chances are you won't even be able to do it because it's not a thing that's set up for just your regular teams. It really has, it's really stinking difficult and you need to have a competitive and strong team in order to even make it through this stinking thing. So I'm not really going to be showing it off, I'm just going to be talking about it right here. The Battle Frontier is sort of like a set of gym battles, except a lot more drawn out. Instead of eight of them, there are seven of them, so there are seven Frontier Brains, which are the gym leaders of this area, and they each give you a symbol instead of a, a gym badge. You get a silver symbol for clearing the certain requirements the first time, and then a gold symbol for clearing it a second time. It does have cool characters, but that's about it, and I kind of wish we did get to show them off, but like I said, I'm just not even going to bother, so... Let's just go down the line and talk about the like, characters just so uh, you can find out what they're all about and also what their facility is all about. First off, uh, in the Battle Tower, we have the Salon Maiden Annabelle. Not from Annabelle's Christmas. Uh, she'll give you the Ability Symbol, and in order to get the Silver Ability Symbol, you need to clear the stinking Battle Tower 35 times and you need to clear it 70 times to get the gold symbol. So that's just sort of an example of how this thing goes on for stinking ever. We have the Battle Palace, which is run by the Palace Ma Maven, Marvin, Mavin, Spencer, and he gives you the spirit symbol, the silver one after 21 victories and the gold one after 42. There is the Battle Factory, run by the factory head Noland, not Norman, uh, he gives you the Knowledge Symbol, the Silver one after 21 victories, the Gold one after 42. There is the Battle Pyramid run by the Pyramid King, Brandon. He gives you the Brave Symbol, uh, only after 3 wins you get the Silver one, after the uh, 10th win you get the Gold one, but it is considered the most challenging out of the bunch. There is the Battle Dome run by Dome Ace Tucker, it's very weird names I know, but whatever. Uh, you get the tactic symbol from him, you get the silver one after 5 victories and the gold one after 10. There is the battle arena, which is run by uh, the arena tycoon Greta. 
she gives you the gut symbol after um if you do it 28 times then you get the silver one and 56 times you get the gold one and then finally there is the battle pike i believe yes the bl the battle the battle pike run by the pike queen lucy she gives you the luck symbol and you get it after only two victories which is nice and then the after 10 victories you get the gold one but still it's not when i say two victories i don't mean just two battles or whatever you have like a little tournament thing inside of each and every one of these things you have to go like go through the entire thing two times or 10 times or 56 times or 42 times it's not just 42 battles it's 42 dungeons basically it takes literal forever and tease forever and tease is what i'm gonna call it. eternities that go on forever it is lay crazy and i do not recommend it to anyone who's just like obsessed with battling like anyone who says mount battle in pokemon coliseum and xd is difficult or annoying not only is this significantly longer but it's a million times more difficult because at least you're never at risk of losing in mount battle in pokemon coliseum or xd but in stinking emerald like you could spend forever here and it just never stinking ends oh my god i'm sorry like i just have a lot of qualms with it because it would be cool if there was like an entirely new region i wouldn't expect like another villainous plot or something like that but if there was just another region that we could explore instead of the, just this one little island that has all these annoyingly long battle facilities that just never seem to stink an end and i that's really all there is to it you just battle and battle and battle until you get these silly little symbols on your little card to for your own self gratification uh, it's not in here is it uh, okay it is here but only when you're in the battle frontier you get this instead of the gym badge screen or no the trainer card you click on here and oh okay so i guess that's our new pass now uh, so we have all our gym badges, the cool stuff, and our Hall of Fame debut. Uh, but yeah, the symbols right here can be seen on this thingy. The Battle Frontier gives you like a little map of the place, which is nice in case you get lost in this area somehow. Uh, what I'm trying to see is, there was a little cave down there, I'm trying to see if we can get down there. I think we gotta walk to uh, the Battle Palace, so we'll go, I'm in the complete opposite direction, so I'll go southeast right now. But yeah, like, I have just so many problems with the Battle Frontier, like, I don't know a single person who actually likes it, and that's the thing. The main complaint I hear from people about uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire is that the Battle Frontier is not available in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire because it wasn't available in Ruby and Sapphire, so it was only an Emerald thing. Why would it be available in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire? Granted, I could agree with you and say that it would make sense for it to be available um, since it's a remake, so even though it's, like, a remake of Ruby and Sapphire, it's still... It could be a remake of Emerald and have stuff from Emerald in it. So I wouldn't really use that as a good excuse as to why they didn't include it, but in the same time, did anyone ever care about this place? Like, maybe I'm completely wrong and people really sting and love this thing and hello. Okay, this might be very familiar to an LP of old and an old friend of old. The weird tree doesn't like the way the whale pale. The weird tree attacked! Yes, there is indeed a wild pseudo wudo here for you to catch. This is the only pseudo wudo in the game. It's not getting a bio because it's a Johto Pokemon. But whatever, if you want to catch it, then you can. But back to what I was saying. Maybe I'm completely wrong on this, and there are a lot of fans of the Battle Frontier, but I've never heard people actually say that they like doing it and that they've actually done it to begin with. So I don't know. I don't know why people complain so much about the lack of a Battle Frontier in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire because no one really, at least as far as I know, no one really cared for it. And my qualms with the Battle Frontier don't really end there. If you've seen the anime of the Battle Frontier, then you know that the Battle Frontier is one of, if not the worst seasons of the anime as a whole. Not only is it just like really uninteresting, and the Battle Frontier takes place in Kanto, which is kind of interesting. So if you have to go back to Kanto again for like a second time or third time or whatever, and got to go through the Battle Frontier, that'd be cool. But no, you're just on this tiny little island. So that's another way this is kind of disappointing. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is that it's really unfortunate because the anime Battle Frontier is so incredibly bad that I just have nothing but negative memories of this place and okay I caught a pseudo hooray. Like basically what I'm trying to say, 
Um, the Ruby and Sapphire era of the anime was the last uh, arc or season, whatever you want to call it. It was the last arc to include uh, the dubbing done by four kids. Battle Frontier and Onward is when it was traded over to the Pokemon Company. I believe they're the ones who do the dubbing of it right now. I could be wrong. Teresa, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, and this is how, uh, defeating Sudowoodo is how you get past these rocks and go down here over to this cave. And I believe over in this cave, I'm sorry I keep on going on like a million different subjects, but, um, just very kerbobble fobbled in the moment. Uh, it's probably they didn't run into any wild Pokemon. Not sure if there even are any wild Pokemon here. Good morning. Uh, Artisan Cave, though, this is kind of an interesting area because I believe it is the only place where you can get Smear. Actually, no, it's not the only place you can get Smeargle. Uh, but this place has Smeargle 100% of the time. It's just a awkward Pokemon. It only knows Sketch, which is a move that makes it uh, gives it the ability to copy another Pokemon's move and keep it on its move set forever. So it's got crummy stats, but it could learn basically anything and everything. So uh, it's good for that and basically nothing else. But yeah, what I'm trying to say about this thing in Battle Frontier anime is that this was the first uh, season to be uh, dubbed over by the Pokemon Company or whoever does the dubbing for the Pokemon anime right now. And let me just say, there was a lot of complaints about uh, the Switch and voice actors and there's always going to be complaints about that because people are so used to the old voices and everything. And I'm going to give like a honest opinion because I do believe I do have like honest unbiased and I got 666 experience uh I believe I do have unbiased opinions on the dub from the Battle Frontier comparison whatever I did miss the original voices like everyone else did but in terms of the overall performance the Battle Frontier dub is horrible it is really really terrible the deliveries are just awful and everyone just seems really awkward the writing is weird and everything it is not good I do not recommend watching the Battle Frontier anime. There's actually like, I believe three or four episodes of the Battle Frontier anime that I'd actually recommend. The first one is actually the second episode of the Battle Frontier anime, so you don't have to go that far in. Uh, it's called Sweet Baby James, I'm sure uh, some of you probably heard of it. Uh, that is an emotional episode to say the least, but it's kind of ruined by the crummy voice acting. Uh, and then the last... A uh, few episodes I would recommend you watch are the ones that involve Ash trying to defeat the Battle Pyramid, which is the final uh, Battle Frontier that he goes through. And the reason for that is because it's a nostalgia trip. Of course, it's not really any other reasons because uh, nostalgia stuff happens. I'll just leave it at that. And again, it's ruined because the voice acting is really crummy. But whatever, I really don't know why I caught the smear goal, and I don't know why the Battle Frontier is just destined to be bad. Like, the opening theme song's annoying, and the dubbing is just horrible. And it's weird because, like, when the Diamond and Pearl anime started immediately after Battle Frontier, the voice acting got really stinking good. It was all the same actors, but, like, they just had a lot more experience, and maybe, maybe it was just, like, the director or something? I have no idea what the dubbing history bet uh, during the Battle Frontier era was like. But that's just sort of my experience with it, is that the Battle Frontier has a god-awful English dub and it's just uninteresting in general because there's no new Pokemon or whatever. You get to see a lot of old Pokemon, like Ash just sort of has a rotation team of his old Pokemon from Kanto, Johto, and Hoenn. But other than that, I found a Calcium. Oh yeah, this place has like a million hidden items in it, that's sort of why you wanted to go through here. Okay, so I guess examine every single rock you find in here. But yeah, um, it's interesting in which you get to see a lot of old Pokemon. And that's about it, really. I don't recommend it at all. It's just not fun. Uh, the only thing good to come out of the uh, Battle Frontier era, I think, is... Was the Lu Lucario movie part of the Battle Frontier era, or was that before? Like, right before? Lucario movie was actually really good. Lucario and the Mystery of Mew, that was a stinking amazing movie. And it was the beginning of Lucario becoming, like, integrated into literally anything and everything involving Pokemon. Like... I don't understand, like, I love the Lucario movie, but I don't understand why Lucario gets added into literally everything afterwards. Like, he becomes, like, a ma main series Pokemon character. He got included into Smash and everything. He was like, they were trying to make Lucario the next Mewtwo or something, and I didn't agree with it. Uh, whatever. I don't really care for Lucario all that much, but I did like that movie. And the Manaphy movie, which was actually really good. A lot of people have kind of mixed opinions on it. It... Uh, focuses around May actually and it was actually really singing good. I really liked it. I don't know how many times I'm gonna say really but whatever uh, We got a protein right here So we're just running around getting a bunch of items that are good for powering up Pokemon if my Pokemon will even accept them 
But yeah, I don't really have anything go good to say about the Battle Frontier anime. It's just a lot of crummy stuff from it. I don't have much else to say. If you, uh, maybe if I could figure out uh, an easier way, not really an easier way, but like, maybe if I'm in the mood for it, I might, I've considered live streaming the Battle Frontier, but it's just not fun. I don't know if I want to. And like I said, it's not a matter of it being too long. Like the Pokemon I have right now, like outright could not beat the Battle Frontier. So I would have to like go out and catch all new Pokemon and raise them in a spe very specific way. It would just be a pain in the booty. So now I'm not going to live stream this thing and hello. No. Uh, secluded area. Uh, I guess I'll jump down. Is this like a new area? I, I saw it! There was a sticky sort of Pokemon with a long tail up ahead. It was hiding under the boulder and it kept staring at me. I think you're talking about Smeargle, but whatever. Uh, Battle Frontier Ranking Hall. Set your records high. Oh yeah, okay. This is the Ranking Hall. I'd like to go down history as Super Champ and have my name recorded here for all posterity. I think that's all there is to show in that area, and we basically seen all the Battle Frontier facilities, so there's nothing else really to do here. We got ourselves a Sudowoodo, we got a Smeargle, we got some extra items, and we got to see Scott's hometown because he's actually the ruler of the Battle Frontier. You can actually find him around here somewhere and he'll give you battle points depending on like how many uh, battle, battle facilities you go through or whatever, and you can exchange the points for uh, other items, which again, aren't really useful unless you're into competitive play for a Game Boy Advance game that's like 20 years old or whatever. So yeah, not really worth your time. The Battle Frontier is unfortunately very, very disappointing. And that's all I got to say about it, really. Uh, I do wonder though, was that a second ex- I don't think it was, I think I went in a circle or something. So yeah, now that we're done with the Battle Frontier, there is really only one more thing I want to show in the Pokemon Emerald side of things, and then we'll wrap everything up in Alpha Sapphire. So, the reason I did this whole adventure the way I did of switching between Emerald and Alpha Sapphire was because I wanted the end of Emerald to have a very epic finale with Steven Stone because I believe him to be the final boss of Pokemon Generation 3. But he unfortunately got switched out with Wallace in Emerald. So where does Steven go exactly? He's gotta be around here somewhere, right? Well, next time on Pokemon Delta Emerald, we're gonna search him out and get that final battle that we so rightly deserve. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.